I am Robert. I'm the estate director at Amista Vineyards. This is Ashley, our winemaker, and Vicki, which is named Vicki and Mike. Vicki is- Mike will be joining. Mike will pop in in a minute. But we are going to do some simple bubbles and bites that are simple bites and bubbles that you can pair with- and simple bubbles. Yeah. And <laughs> Simple bubbles, simple bites, both things. <laughs> that you can grab at Trader Joe's and have paired with your wines just for yourself, or if you have some friends come over and you don't want to cook, but you want to have some great little bites to go with some sparkling wine, you can do it yourself. Vince, Brenda, do you want to turn your camera on so that we can see you as well? We're we're actually going to oh, be oh, in we hot, we're actually getting into the hot tub, so uh, we're going oh, to uh, <laughs> we're actually bringing the the bites right now. But uh, yeah, so if you don't mind, we'll be camera off. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now bubbles that you also mentioned. bubbles also go with hot tubs, so that's yeah. true. <laughs> Very well. Very well. well well, let's um, pop some corks. And then we also love to start off our virtuals by having people um, put their names and where they're from on their screen so that you never know there might be a connection right next door. Woo. Not doing so. Thank you. Absolutely. So we're going to start with the Blanc de Blanc. Is that enough? Well, probably not for like the long <laughs> run. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we can revisit. We can revisit. <laughs> okay. All right. So while we're waiting for a couple more things, um, Ashley, why don't you tell us about this um, Blanc de Blanc? And I think this is from the 18 vintage, awesome. but, but it's a non-vintage. So from the 18 growing season. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Cheers. And thank you for being here. Um, this is our Blanc de Blanc. So Blanc de Blanc means white of white. So it's a white wine made from white grapes. In our case, and in a lot of cases, traditionally it's um, Chardonnay. So all of this Chardonnay comes from our estate vineyards. We started making a Blanc de Blanc in 2011 which was our second sparkling wine. Um, all of our sparkling wines, so we have six of them, are all grown right here on our property. So we were the first winery in Dry Creek Valley to make sparkling wines out of our estate grapes. And we've continued that. And I, I mean, I think we drink about half the production. But <laughs> I was gonna say the reason we made this wine is to save me money. Cause I yeah. figured- <laughs> I was that buying, is a true fact, actually. <laughs> I was buying cases of sparkling wine from another winery, and my, Mike said, don't you think we could save money if we just made our own? <laughs> it worked. I think so. I think it worked. <laughs> it's good for everyone. <laughs> um, so like I said, all of our um, all of our sparkling wines are made in the traditional method champenois. So what that means is we pick these grapes at about 19 bricks and bricks is a measurement of sugar. So 19 bricks is about five, four or five bricks lower than you pick for a still wine. And what that does is it keeps the alcohol low enough in the base wine that it can go through a secondary fermentation and bottle because alcohol can be toxic to yeast. Um, so if we keep it low enough, um, it ends up being about 11% alcohol in the baseline, and then it goes to bottle. So it ferments once, goes to bottle, and we put a little more yeast and a little bit of sugar in there, and that creates about 1% more alcohol, but the other magical thing it does is those yeasts create these little tiny delicate bubbles that you see. So all those bubbles are created under pressure in each individual bottle. And that's where all the magic comes from in Method Champenois. So after about a year or a year and a half in bottle, we disgorge. So what that means is all the sediment from the yeast and lees um, or from the wine itself settle into the cork area or you know, at the top of the bottle into the neck of the bottle. 
and we freeze that portion. So we turn it upside down, we freeze it, and then we pop that plug of ice out, which we did this morning with a different wine. You and make it sound like you do that with your own hands, though. That's yeah, no, that. machines do that. Machines <laughs> I don't do, do that. that. That's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> so you pop out the plug of ice and then it leaves this really crystal clear wine and we add just a little bit sometimes we do not always we add a little bit of dosage back and dosage is just a little bit of sugar to balance out the acidity because we're picking these grapes so much earlier we need just a touch of acidity to balance everything out and we put a cork in it and then we then we drink it all and it's delicious <laughs> So as, as Ashley was saying that each vintage is, it varies on what the percentage of sugar dosage that we put into the wines. Um, and we have to do some really hard work where we take the controlled bottle and then um, Ashley will take four or five other bottles and put different percentages of sugar dosage in them and we have to taste them. It's very hard. Wine making is very hard. <laughs> So much drinking involved. <laughs> but it's really, it's fascinating on how just a small percentage of sugar can change, yeah. change the, the clarity, it can change the nose, it can change how it hits your palate. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's fascinating. And there's no, there's no formula every single year. Every vintage is different. So that's why we have to taste it every single time. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because um, sugar isn't linear. So, you know, there are some things you add and they get progressively better or they get progressively worse or, you know, you like increase to a sweet spot, like, you know, whatever. But with um, sugar, it actually doesn't work that way because it plays with some of the other things going in the going on in the wine with the acidity, with, you know, the buffering capacities, with pH it changes and interacts with all of those. So you might really like one and really hate another. And it's not a linear like um, process. So it does take a little bit of work and it's um, we're willing to do that work just for you guys. <laughs> well, um, so does everybody have the bites prepared? Yep. Robert prepared my bites. I was delivering baseball cleats to my child, so thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with um, the first bite that I paired with the Blanc de Blanc, and that one was the, the little puff pastries with the uh, feta and caramelized onions. Ooh, those are so, so good. pretty. Those are so good. So, so good looking. Mm -hmm. So it's not often talked about, but really there is a right way to taste food and wine together. And so the right way actually is to have a sip of wine and to have those flavors on your palate and then to take a bite of the food, finish it all down and have one more sip of wine and then evaluate all, you know, three of those tastes all at once. Um, and that's the, I don't know that that actually happens often, but that <laughs> if there, that is like the technical right way. So you can taste them however you want, though. Mm. Those little bites are good. Oh, they're delicious. Mm. The caramelized onion mm. is delicious with this. Yeah, I love caramelized onion. And with the cheese, it just is such a nice mm. balance. <laughs> oh, that's actually really delicious. <laughs> you can buy these at Trader Joe's? You can. Oh, yeah. That's very, so very yummy. When Vicky and Mike started Amista and they were doing tastings, they didn't have a tasting room and they would organize with friends and club members to have little wine parties and they would stop at Trader Joe's and they would No, get, we wouldn't stop it. Oh, we made them buy them. Oh, we okay. made them buy all the food. We said, we'll bring the wine. You get these things from Trader Joe's or make your own. <laughs> that's how we did it. <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> well, that's what I do too now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just show up to Robert's office. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, they would buy 
bites based on Vicky and Mike's recommendations to <laughs> to go along with the wines. And uh, yeah, then you've got a great little quick pairing and it looks like you've outdone yourself. Yeah, we wanted to make it easy for people. And yet a lot of the, you get a lot of really delicious stuff at Trader Joe's, as you probably all know. So uh, everybody thought it was a, a cool idea. So that's where we came up with the idea for this simple bites and bubbles. I love that. <laughs> you know, I think there is this sort of misconception. We talked about this on last night Zoom. And Jill, I think you, you were in that mm -hmm. one, yeah? You know, everyone thinks that bubbles are like meant to be paired with oysters or caviar or these really high end things. And they do go quite well with those things. But honestly, I feel that the very best pairing is French fries, potato chips and popcorn. <laughs> oh, um, good. You know, they just need a little bit of like okay. salty, buttery. And yeah, and chocolate. Yeah, with some of the sparklings. Um, you know, and you, they really are very versatile and because ours are more fruit driven, um, they're more acidity driven, you know, they do pair well with a variety of foods and, and also the thing that sparklings do is they sort of cut through the richness of certain foods. So this very cheesy, very rich, very savory little tart, you know, the acidity of the Blanc de Blanc, it not only pops the fruit in the, in the Blanc de Blanc, but that acidity actually cuts through some of that richness and sort of leaves a little bit cleaner um, feeling on your palate. So it's a really nice pairing. Yeah, thank you. Good job, Robert. Good job, Robert. Apparently yeah. I did need more too. I, did, I drank most of it. Let me get you some more. So the next <laughs> one- Is enough food, Robert? You know, she's no. like- <laughs> I didn't think so. It was like, oh, this is only serving for one, not five, like I usually can eat. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one up is the artichoke and jalapeno dip with the uh, plantain chips instead of potato chips. I am very, very, very excited about this. I really love dip too. <laughs> well, you'll be excited about simple you made chips substitutions on this one. I'm sorry. You made substitutions. What did you substitute? everything because I don't like artichoke or anything, but they have um, these sea salt um, flatbreads that are fabulous. Oh, those are good. Yes, awesome. Those are good with, I a, bet. with a cheddar. Ooh, oh, that yeah. sounds good. good too. Good. We like all kinds of ideas. So. Yeah. Um, when I go home, I might just recreate this pairing, but um, with just creme fraiche straight from the tub and potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have with it. That's my substitution. <laughs> Should we try it? Yeah. Get to try it now? Let's okay. try it. <laughs> mm. Ooh, dip is so good. Mm. It has a little bit of a kick to it. Mm -hmm. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, that's so good. I like it that brings one. out a completely different element in the wine. I like it so much. The saltiness from the plantains. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, these are good. I've never had those before. I could eat a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, did you get this some? This is really good. Time? This is really good. Do you like it? Mm. Yeah. I, I'm gonna have another one. <laughs> yeah, you well, better. Vicky, uh, just, Better Vicky's eat them all. I'm coming. To, I'm going to come over there and get some because it sounds really good. <laughs> you should. You can come over here. <laughs> Leave well, Mike time. is making Vic, Vicky paella tonight. Yeah, because it's a special day for her. And we're going to come over there and have some paella. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. that's fair. All right, Lauren. We'll just wait for some doggy bags tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Happy birthday today, Vicky. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. My best thing that happened today is my my cleaning person came for the first time in over a year, so I'm overjoyed. Oh, that's so <laughs> exciting. 
Yeah, the paella will be good, but the cleaning is really good. <laughs> that that is really, amazing. I'm having my hair done tomorrow for the first time in like a year, and uh, I can't wait. Yeah. Isn't that funny how we appreciate all these little things? Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the day that my kids can go on sleepovers again. <laughs> They used to have so many sleepovers with their friends, and now they're come just... to Florida. Yeah, can I just yeah. ship them to Florida to you? <laughs> just sure. kidding. And, and there to Jill, they're, <laughs> they're chill. They like wine and food. Hold they're good. On. Oh, in that case, they'll be terrific here. Are you yeah, <laughs> they're eight and ten. Are they cute? They're oh, cute. They're, they're right. really cute. Cute is. <laughs> Very, very cute children, which is part of the problem. You're like, I can't say no because you're very adorable. <laughs> and actually, they love to be in the vineyard. Um, Sir James certainly during harvest, and and oh, yeah. he'll pull the leaves out of the bins, and uh, he picks with the crew. Sometimes he has his own little bucket, and he'll just be out there, and he's like wiping the sweat off his brow, dumping his fruit into the bin. <laughs> That's he gets so very cute, into though. it. I like yeah. that. <laughs> it's adorable. That's really cute. Yeah, he is very into it. So they're very fun. Mostly. Pre-pandemic, they were very fun. <laughs> you know, at, the, at this we point, we spent a lot of time together lately. My my governor wants everybody back. So he's opening the schools up. September, all the schools have to open up and no masks for children. Oh wow. I'm hoping that my kids get vaccinated or, you know, like the vaccines start mm. being available. No, to, here, here so they, they dropped it to 18 and starting next week, everybody gets it. That's awesome. I so, think we're, we're closer, almost there we're as six, well. We're at 16. I yeah. My, I have number one. Number two is May the 10th. Woohoo! Excellent. Yeah, we got ours. Luckily, um, agriculture was um, pretty early in the vaccination program. So we were very lucky to get ours. Um, I think it's been like six weeks since the second one, yeah. right? We got ours about the same time. So I actually am an essential uh, for what I do. But unfortunately, with so many of my clients home ridden, I had them vaccinated first because it would have looked Aww. kind of crappy if I got it. So yeah. I got vaccinated. Then I got vaccinated. Yeah, bless your heart. Yeah, that's yeah, so you know cool. what? I, I was also, the governor was good there. He actually gave us a team that came in and vaccinated all the people at home. Oh, so, really? California's still struggling with that. No, so he, he did a good job. The, the Atlantis team and these guys came in. Boom, and I was able to get everybody vaccinated. Oh, that's so Excellent. cool. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. You think there's something like, right? let's something do it. Right? Let's be vaccinated, everyone. Let's, so we let's can all come on. back together yes. again. Let's <laughs> hang out. You know, it's so funny because so many of my friends, most of everyone's vaccinated, but a lot of people that I know don't want to get vaccinated. Oh, really? I, I don't want to get vaccinated either, but I really want to go back to my own life. So. I know. <laughs> You know, is this my first choice? No, I don't want to stick yeah. anything in my arm. And I would have preferred J&J, &J, but they took it off the market like the day I was supposed to. Two of my friends got it the day before and then they took it off. So that was the end of that. Well, one quick shot would have been nice. That's what I'm thinking. Because that yeah. I, mean, I got sick from the first one. That, and, I, and I understand I'm going to get sicker from the second. I'm like, oh, yeah, something to look forward to. Yeah, right. you're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right. So, Robert, okay. do we have another pairing with this one, or do we move to the... No, that is it on the Blanc de Blanc. So... Oh, good. So, we're on my... The Syrah. On to the favorite. Is that sparkling Syrah in your glass? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, before oh, we move on, do you guys have any questions about the Blanc de Blanc or food pairings or any anything that you love to pair with with sparkling wine or anything in general? Pair it with anything. <laughs> yeah. Pair with anything. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, as somebody, I'm sorry, we're having a bad last, internet connection. Uh, Janice and Sean, last night there, somebody said the Blanc de Blanc it paired with a porch. Oh, I think yeah. I said that. <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go. Nikki exactly. was like, Nikki asked me right before. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, Vicky asked me yesterday, right before we started our Zoom, what I like to pair with the Grenache. And I was like, a warm day and the and the porch swing. I <laughs> no no. It was like anything, literally anything. A cold day, anything. I'll pair with it. <laughs> you Ashley, I can't remember if you were there, but Haas made a really simple but delicious thing. Oh, with the grated on. cheese on the chips. Oh, I was yeah, there. they were kettle chips and then he grated uh, Estero gold cheese, which is a local cheese, but it's kind of a hard aged cheese on top of it. And then wasn't there something else? There was Robert? lavender. 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 It was so beautiful, served on a, a board and but it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you open the cork and it popped. <laughs> Did it get on your computer? No, it didn't oh, I just, I took the cake off. <laughs> Usually oh we have God. a little bit of time. Wow, I never have that. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Jill, it happens. Oh my gosh. Having a heart attack over here. Sorry for screaming. Oh, Lori put the Syrah last night in her um, wine fridge. And when she um, got it out this morning, it wasn't in one piece. It apparently had exploded last night. Oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, I bet it was fun to clean the refrigerator. I know. I'm, thinking, I'm like, I'd lick it. I, you know, and the dog, I could just imagine Nala going, like the little dog. <laughs> I did want to say, so Vicky, back to the chips and cheese pairing with the sparkling. I have tried that at my house with some different, I tried it with like a hard manchego one oh. day, cause that's what I had in the fridge. And it was so good, it's so simple. Um, I people really- would think, People would think that was a super elegant hors d'oeuvre, you know, or- It was so yeah, pretty. Absolutely. It was really pretty. Yeah, I I really liked it. And I went to a restaurant over in Napa, um, trying to think of the name of it, but um, they had chips, like just kettle chips, with a little bit of creme fraiche and just like a little bit of trout roe. Mm. And you know, it's that's not that expensive. It's just like, you know, trout roe is like the cheaper one at the fish market. And I tried that at home one day with our Blanc de Blanc. And that was, I felt like the fanciest person ever. And it really isn't like, it wasn't that complicated. It wasn't that hard of a pairing, but it really, I was thinking when we're allowed to have parties again, that I would do that at a party because it's just so simple, but like really looks elegant. So you can really take like sort of lowbrow things and make them look like quite nice. So, well, that's the idea of this is that, you know, do some simple things that, that go really well with sparkling wine. So does everybody have some sparkling Syrah in their glass? No. I gotta yeah. come get do you. Do you need some, Vicky? You can come over here. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one that we did was something super simple and easy, just a little caprese. So it was the little cherry tomatoes with a little mozzarella and a little one of the leaves of basil, fresh, just and what I liked about it is the acid in the tomato worked really well with the sparkling and the creaminess of the mozzarella. I was a little concerned at the beginning about the basil and it being too overpowering, but it works so well with the sparkling Syrah. So let's do it and then you can talk about the sparkling Syrah. Okay, let's try so, the pairing. Oh, and Vicky's coming over to get her sparkling throw. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna get a whole bottle. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sharing. I was like, can I try some of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Sorry, guys, I'll be gone in a second. <laughs> Just snack stealing, not to worry. She is the birthday girl, so she gets to steal snacks. Mm -hmm. mm. So you are definitely right. Whoa, that makes the fruit like completely, completely pop. 
in the sparkling sorrel, like the acidity of the tomatoes. Isn't that yummy? Yeah, it's so good. Mm. That's so Robert made me two, two of them. So <laughs> I, still have a, I still have another one that I'm gonna eat in a second. <laughs> um, so the sparkling Syrah. So this was the wine that Mike and Vicky started their like foray into sparkling with. They started making a sparkling Syrah in 2008 before I started with them. I started in 2011. Sorry, I'm on a call. And they, um, you know, they, they were making a rosé of Syrah and they decided, you know, like, what would it look like to make that into, you know, Method Champenois sparkling? So they took a little bit, a trial amount and um, tried it and it was delicious. And my first introduction to it, um, I worked with Mike and Vicky where they made their wine before I was their winemaker. And Mike brought me a bottle for Christmas one year. And I looked at it and I was like, I was so judgy. I was like, this is very pink and it's going to be very sweet and I am not going to like it. <laughs> and I put it away for like a year and didn't touch it. And um, I actually opened it up like a friend of mine, like put it in the cooler at like a, a like backyard party and opened it up. And I was like, oh my God, this is so pretty and so beautiful and not sweet at all so delicious and I completely fell in love with it in that moment and I don't know which came first but um but I ended up working for them not long after that maybe it was just like me really wanting more of that Syrah sparkling Syrah <laughs> and and I've been in love ever since this wine is the wine that my family requests for their Thanksgiving table I like it for Christmas. I like it for all of crab season. I mean, it's the wine that goes from spring and summer and all the way through winter. It's like my my winter bubbles. Is the, I don't know if that's a thing, but if it is, this is my winter bubbles. My like actual winter, because I'm from Tahoe, not my California winter where we don't actually have a winter. <laughs> it's the real winter bubbles. <laughs> You know, one of the things about um, our sparklings is they have so much fruit characteristics about them that... See, I think it's um, Marie, and I told you not to do this. One of our very dear friends, and Ashley's actually one of her besties, um, Tara Jasper, she is a distiller, and she has a line of gins that she creates. And Tara made a, um, a cocktail for us for our sparkling holiday party this last winter. Um, and we called it Truly Madly Sparkling. So it was with her gin, she made a thyme simple syrup and the sparkling Syrah. And it was absolutely sensational. And we served that as the greeting cocktail at our sparkling holiday party. The Blanc de Blanc, she paired with her gin again and Meyer lemons from my lemon tree and um, absinthia, it's an absence that's made by a woman named Cynthia. Um, so it was all female made and it was a French 75. We, um, we kicked off that on one of our virtual tastings. I still have the absinthe, I put it in everything. Oh Me too, I was just gonna say that. And then Tara is releasing her spring gin that's now going to be made with some really beautiful floral botanicals um, that she's going to make a cocktail with our sparkling Grenache. Um, okay. So we're, we're going to do a virtual tasting with that um, in May. So stay tuned and sign up for it. It'll, it's going to be pretty sensational. Yeah, um, that cocktail was so good. So, although that was the day that I got my second vaccine and I think I slept for like 20 hours after that, but it was so good. So vaccine and French 75s. Perfect. <laughs> it went great. <laughs> That's what you should do, Jill. <laughs> Just have like one cocktail and you're good. <laughs> no pain. So Janice, Sean, did you, did you make the, the little caprizis? Well, we didn't have the, but we do have them. <laughs> Kind of putting everything you, on a floor. What did you think about it with the uh, the sparkling Syrah? I thought it was really nice. I I really liked it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a tomato fan. I hate that part. And so, I think. 
Say that again, Sean. I said I'm not a tomato fan, so I uh, I did just a peas and basil. I think that made a difference. I didn't get the the acidity. Uh, but, you know, I'm enjoying. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so I will also say something exciting. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but we are in the process of planting a tasting garden at our tasting room. And I think some of the things that we'll focus on, you know, besides fresh herbs, of course, um, but are things like tomato, cherry tomatoes for this tasting. Of course, basil will be on there. Um, parsley, I can see um, our next thing and cucumber. So if you do come out to visit in the next what, whenever, whenever that's a possibility for you. I think we're going to have some fun things lined up and um, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. It, so we'll be able to take things from the garden and use them in, as part of our tasting experience, which is really okay. exciting. Well, our basil is actually from our garden. Excellent. Oh, yay! <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> basil, and Sean, tomatoes. Sean, don't worry. I'm going to eat your tomatoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Right. We'll no. have other things too, not to worry. Sean, my dog <laughs> eats my tomatoes. Loves them. Oh, my dog <laughs> loves tomatoes. Loves That's so weird. Is that a dog dog friendly thing? Yes. I don't know, but I when, check. when we really when we, That's so funny. When we grew them in the yard, they would steal them just before they were ripe and eat them all. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what my dog, and that's why I checked because I would go outside and they'd be gone. Yep. That is so funny. <laughs> we didn't need a deer fence. We needed a dog fence. All right. A dog fence. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope the uh, sparkling Syrah and the Blanc de Blanc are pairing nicely with the hot tub, Vince and Brenda. Um, <laughs> but why don't we go on to the next one? And I decided to do this instead of um, with the with a cracker, doing it with something that was a little crispy and kind of fresh and cool that can go with the heat of the- um, Hot tub? Yeah, hot tub. <laughs> the, buffalo, the buffalo chicken dip. Oh, I was just about to ask what the dip is. So again, in the tasting fashion. Yeah, sip, bite, sip. Sip it, sip. Mm. Well, that's good. Ooh, what's that dip? Sorry, you chew and then you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a buffalo chicken dip. Oh, it's delicious. Isn't that yummy? Yeah, it's right. so good. Does it have blue cheese in it? Maybe. Tastes like it might. Yeah, it, might. Don't buffalo don't buffalo chicken wings usually get dipped in some kind of a blue cheese? Yeah, thing? that's true. <laughs> He's gonna look at the trash. <laughs> oh, on the no, my little bag. <laughs> Your little bag. Looking at his got a little, little bag. bag of treats over here that I'm just now seeing. Okay. You want me to read it? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the bifocals aren't focaling. So no, it says um, cream cheese, sour cream, cayenne pepper sauce, shredded Monterey Jack. Huh. But it does, doesn't it taste a little blue cheesy? Yeah, but maybe that's the sour blue. cream or cream cheese. Okay, this Sounds is delicious. Good. I never go to Trader Joe's because I have an aversion to crazy parking lots and that parking lot gets so crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible reason to not go. But, <laughs> mm. but one of the things that Ashley always says is that the sparkling Syrah is pairs so well with Thai food. Mm -hmm. So the spicy heat of this cayenne really goes well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not just that, like even like salsas or like more Mexican food, it pairs so, so well with that. We're the only other real thing that I've been able to pair with Mexican food is, is beer, like truly like a very, very light beer, just because it can't really have like that much character. And then 
the sparkling Syrah really elevates both things. Um, it's really, it's, it's quite pretty with it. Um, and I, I love it. This wine sort of takes some of the bite away from the, the heat and also like elevates the fruitiness of chilies and of peppers and of spices. So it's a very, very mm. versatile and delicious wine. Love it. I know, this we make a taco oh. salad. So talk about pairing bubbles with something really kind of not very elevated, but, but yummy. Mm. <laughs> we make a taco salad with, you know, with lettuce and avocado and onions and peppers and um, sour cream and cheese and then hot sauce. And this really does go beautifully with it. Mm. And chips. And chips. And chips. Of course. Yep. There have to be chips. <laughs> the saltiness of the chips. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the Ashley was saying about the additional uh, sparklings that we have. So Blanc de Blanc, Sparkling Grenache, and that was what you tasted last night, Jill. Um, a, the Sparkling Syrah, uh, Fusion, which is predominantly Chardonnay, and it's dosaged with a little bit of Grenache and a little bit of Syrah. Amazing. And that was originally kind of our take on a uh, Blanc du Noir. And then we have the sparkling Mavedra, which we call Mataro, the Spanish term. And that's what Ashley this morning was, was just dis disgorging. disgorging and putting the labels on. And that's going to be going out in the wine club um, in May. Um, and then this last year, we picked for a blend of Grenache, Mavedra and Syrah. So that's going to be our sparkling trace as a rosé. Um, so we're super excited about that. It's been something that we've been talking about for, for several years, and this was the year to do it. So our vines are, we, we planted a, a bunch of additional Grenache um, vines so that we had more Grenache available so that we could do a standalone still Grenache, um, increased production on our sparkling Grenache, because that was the one in 2017, one of the trade publications selected as one of the top 10 hot brands. And that same year, selected Ashley as winemaker of the month for July. Nice. I was like, I didn't remember when that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, we, we continue to evolve and really look at the estate as it's our gem and we really want to showcase it. Um, we planted this last year, a small block out in front of Vicki and Mike's house of Rusan, and we'll see what happens. I've, I've got a few things that are happening in here <laughs> to make his recommendations. And, you know, as club members, we'll test, test some of these wines um, with you and get your feedback and see if we're on the right course because you know your input is so valuable to us um, and it really helps kind of guide us in we have big ideas but are we on the right path and is it something that that you enjoy so keep watching <laughs> keep watching us eat and enjoy food that exactly. Robert has prepared. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was the first vintage of, of anything? First that, vintage of any anything that we made, the first vintage we started. Vicki, do you yeah. want to take that and, oh, sparkling wines? Of anything. We, oh, of all the fruit? Our, yeah, we were we came to Hillsburg for our honeymoon uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> and I'm just curious, what year did you, guys start off okay so our very first vintage was 2003 okay. which we you know didn't sell any it was all red wine so we couldn't sell any of them until 2005 when they were ready but that was when we first picked the year before that we made what we called garage syrah which was just non-commercial wine that mike made in the garage <laughs> so when did you first come to Healdsburg? it was 2007 Oh, wow. Okay, wow. 
And that was the first year the tasting room was open, right, Vicky? It was, yeah. That's when we opened our tasting room. Oh. That year, there was in uh, the very end of October, well, the first of November, there was a little wine and food uh, weekend that happened. And uh, so we got married and we came out there and did that. And then we drank it two or three times. <laughs> Excellent. Oh yeah, food and wine affair, right? Yeah. That's the first, yeah. The first yeah. weekend. Yeah. 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 Oh, perfect. Yeah. We took out the cookbook, and that's actually what brought us back to you guys. Is you know thinking about coming back out next year for our uh, anniversary. Yay! Oh, okay. Yay. Yay. We'd love I love to it. Have you. We'd love to see you in we'll person. Yeah, we'll stop by for sure. Definitely, oh for sure. That sounds awesome. Yeah, Jill, Jill and her friend Lori are coming out the end of July um, to see us, and that'll oh, be the good. very first time um, that we'll see them in person, so we're super excited about that. We, we are, too. In fact, we just, we just chopped, we were going to go to Oregon after, and we just chopped off the Oregon part of the trip. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you were talking about it last time. night. Did you just get rid of it after last night? <laughs> You know what? We had last night and Lori calls me up after. She's like, you know, we have a Mista. We have so much going on there. Do we really need to go to Oregon after? <laughs> Honestly, she was the one that wanted to go to Oregon. I could drink Pinot down in Sonoma. At Marmar's. Yeah, at Marmar's. With no problem. So. Oh my God, I love that so much. <laughs> That's great. Wow, we can't wait to see you guys. Like me said, so I called the travel. She, I'm sure she wasn't thrilled. I called the travel. And I'm like, I'm really sorry, but we're not going to Willamette Valley. And and she had sat on. What I think what really made the difference is we found a wonderful woman in Sonoma um, who's planned everything. She's been incredible, and the other woman has done nothing. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? We have a whole trip. Yeah. Got a whole trip planned. I'm going to Hillsboro. I mean, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty here. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Hillsburg, Portland. You know, <laughs> the feeling wasn't very yeah. well. <laughs> Portland has its nice moments. My sister it's lives nice. in Portland. It, uh, it, I'm sure it's lovely. And to be honest with you, I'm dying to go to Seattle because I love Chihuly and I would love to see. Oh, the, do you love Chihuly? Uh, I am oh, a I would huge love to go there. Chihuly fan. Next yep. year, you know. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Seattle is also a very cool city, but honestly, I, I mean, I am very um, biased because I live here, but nothing beats Healdsburg. Nothing beats Sonoma County. I love it there. And I'm very happy to just meander, drink and have a good time and not have to worry about getting here and doing this. And Yeah. You, know. you don't want to rush it. You just want to yeah. enjoy and, and take it all in. Sonoma County is also very diverse. I mean, we have everything from wineries and then we go all the way to the coast and we have like this really rugged coastline we're that's also the coast. very beautiful. So we're actually staying in Bodega Bay. Oh, Yay. Right. oh yeah, we're doing, I'm doing the whole coast because I love it and she's never seen any of that. Oh, oh that's, that's so cool. cool. And, and then we can go through, you can go to the uh, Armstrong Redwoods, which is a beautiful park. We, did, we, went there. There. we went there. We went there. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah, lots to do. I just put that one on the list. Red, yeah, I'm strong it's, redwoods. It's so diverse yeah. here. We have so much to offer in one county. It's really, it's really amazing. And that's not yeah. to discount. I mean, I do love, I love Oregon and I love um, Seattle, but, you know, we just, we offer a lot of things all in one and you do want to take your time and experience floor just because there there is so much there's so much to it i highly recommend if you are a fan of oysters it's a little bit south of us it's in marin not sonoma but i'm um, going to tamales bay oh. and making a reservation at hog island yeah. um you know and having some oysters and seeing tamales bay as well we just we have so many things so many things to offer here so yeah but again, I'm I'm really biased. <laughs> so I mean, I'm, so I, fine. I'm biased too. I love it out there. So. <laughs> I want to make sure that Vince and um and Brenda are dressed. Yeah. We're <laughs> uh, on camera now. <laughs> All the optional hot tubbing. <laughs> I think they have a bunch of neighbors too. So <laughs> <laughs> we're 
also landscaping and doing all kinds of work in our backyard. So even behind us isn't very presentable, let alone our bathing suits aren't super presentable. So <laughs> really the whole time. We love your tastings. We love your... Uh, we so much for opening up Trader Joe dips to us. I hadn't, I hadn't, I go to Trader Joe's and I don't, I kind of bypass that section to be honest. And it's just opened it up. Our, our kids were watching what I was making and they're like, oh, can I try that? I mean, on a cucumber, really? Okay, yeah, go for it. And they're like, this is good. So thank you, thank you. This is really nice. Absolutely. <laughs> You're welcome. That's and fantastic. Now, and now we know what to, you know, serve impromptu to guests that come over that we can pair with your wine. You know, yeah. it's like a quick, a quick um, snack that we can pair with your wine for them. It's, this is awesome. Thank you. And then they'll think that you've gone all out. Exactly. Right. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was thinking like they look so presentable. It was all really simple things that you can have on hand for people showing up. And especially as we're not we're not gathering as much in restaurants and things like that. You know, people are doing smaller gatherings at people's houses. And so I'm even excited to have these in my repertoire. So thank you, Robert. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Robert. Good job, Robert. Party planner. The cutest Party stuff planner. there. Everything's all, I mean, and it looks, everything's, you're right. It's everything's so presentable. That's what's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Like, it's so beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah, we were thinking about having a virtual tasting uh, about plating, like, you know, how to plate something that's simple so that it looks gorgeous. Great. Uh, that's actually a great, I mean, I, I you like that? Because I mean, I think Robert's really good at it. And I think it would be really fun to learn how to do that. There's just, just simple things you can do to make something pop, you know? Okay, I, I love that idea. I don't want to be a host of it. I'm I'm gonna to need to attend that because okay. I'm not be beautiful okay. right we now. Can, we can get um. Oh, who's the guy that does Hell's Kitchen? God damn it, Joe. Oh yeah, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Gordon. <laughs> That's how I learned how to play it. I watched Master Chef. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Master oh, yeah. Master yeah. Master. yeah. I have to watch that. My oh, Jill, so Jill, maybe what we should have is a, a plating, what would you call it? A, a plating smackdown. And yeah. everybody <laughs> everybody can everybody can show their plates. Who has the prettiest plates? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> you think? Well, so I host <laughs> Lori and I host this event. It's the Lung Force, it's a, uh, for the Lung Association. And last year we did is we did a flower arranging and I actually led the ah. thing. But what we did is we had the, all everyone who did the flowers in the event, we had them vote on who did the best arrangement. So you can do oh, the I best love that. And that That's person fun. got a bottle of. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 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 so I, I have to tell you guys, I made um, last night, so last night we had a, another virtual tasting. And so I prepped everything for dinner earlier in the day. And I made like, sort of like kind of a half ass like lentil Nisswa salad. It's like a Bon Appetit recipe. And we have nasturtiums growing like right outside the door. So I like put together this whole thing. I thought it looked pretty, but I was like, oh, I'm going to put some nasturtiums on it. And my eight-year-old son was like, Mom, did you put flowers on it just to hide the fact that we're having lentils? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> did it work? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently it did not work. He would be a very good chef to master chef. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That plate doesn't work. <laughs> Take the flowers off. <laughs> So harsh. Oh, so there. I know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad I'm oh, not the cook I'm the cookie. I'm not the cooker on the cookie, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> cookie. That's me too, Jill. Mike's in there making my paella. <laughs> we were just at your well, library, um a few days ago over over Easter break. We went with our kids actually. 
Um, oh, really? We got the um, little box, you know, the little tasting boxes that you have, the little cheese and nuts and. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah we got that with our tasting and we played the patanque. Is that how you call it? Yep. Yeah. Patank. So our kids enjoyed themselves. People like that and had a little tasting and they enjoyed that as well. The uh, little taste, but they did miss the pomegranate because I guess we were in season for pomegranate last time we were there. So this time it wasn't pomegranate season. So they, uh, you know, we're missing that, but we're looking forward to this idea of your tasting garden and having other options. So yeah. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It'll be fun. I think it's going to be really, really fun. I We just need the boxes built. I've got the starts. My tomatoes are like, getting really crazy right now. <laughs> They're ready to go in the ground. So we're very excited. Come in a couple of months and we'll have we'll have a lot of things to taste and and Robert's expertise to make everything look beautiful and taste good. I can only grow things. I can't actually do the rest of it. So. I can, I can. <laughs> uh, here, wait, we, we can, we can co-brand. We can have a Mista seed. So now you can have a oh. Oh my gosh. I like that so much. I <laughs> wow, like it. I like that. So good. The seeds of friendship. Ooh, what do you think? There you go. Oh, so we can toast maybe, to it at the maybe we should save seeds this year and then maybe that can be like our holiday party give out or something. I like this idea. <laughs> Although I will say I saved seeds last year and like half of them didn't start. So I'm going to need to work. I'm better gardener, apparently, than I am like a seed saver. So I'm going to need to work on that, too. <laughs> seed thing I don't get, I go to the garden, I buy the plants, and then I grow the plants. Because the focaccia <laughs> seeds, I... <laughs> and especially here, because I, I, I'm in Hollywood, Florida, which is on the borderline of Fort Lauderdale. So oh, okay. it rains. It, it, and when oh. it rains here, so the seed, you just put the seed in, the poor thing's growing, boom, it's it's gone because it just got it. Face, so. <laughs> we have the opposite problem we put seeds in the ground and it never rains and then they're just still seeds like two years later <laughs> they're just seeds <laughs> in the ground decomposing because it's never gotten water <laughs> we actually have had a drought this has not been a very wet um in winter. florida yeah but wow. is that big butt coming? We are forecast to have massive amounts of hurricanes this summer. So. Oh no! Yeah, I hope I'm that's what you want. Oh. No, no. If if they're, you know what? I mean, this sounds ridiculous. Three or under, I, they're not really terrible, and it's not that awful. It's the four. It's the four. Well, the five you're leaving, but it's the four that you're like, well, am I going to die? Do I leave? You know, it's. Yeah. Um, Oh my gosh. Now I'm actually pretty lucky. I have the hard rock. So we have a um, Indian nation. The Seminole have their own little nation right next to Hollywood and they built a hard rock. They own billions of whatever. So they built a um, hurricane proof hotel there. So oh. literally oh, awesome. a mile and a half, two miles from my, you can almost see yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. If you, It's a big guitar. It's, it's really oh. cool. Looking. It's like in the shape of a guitar. It's pretty cool. Really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, they have a lot of money. <laughs> Even during the well, pandemic, they all did. All those casinos. Yeah. Yep. But they're not real casinos. They're Indian casinos. So they have different rules than the regular casinos. You can still play poker and blackjack and whatever you want to do there. So I know my law partner spends an inordinate amount of time there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to thank everyone, and it was so good to be able to engage and have have a small conversation. You know, these are these are really what our virtual tastings are about: is having engagement and talking about things that we love, and that's wine and friendship, and food, and food, and, and food. Vicky's <laughs> birthday. Okay. And Vicky, happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday! Thank you. And Vicky, when I when we come out there, my birthday is good. my birthday is July twenty sixth, so I'll be I like. I know you. You said that we're gonna celebrate. Yeah, Lori's unfortunately. We were actually supposed to go out for Lori's birthday a few years ago, and 
we didn't make it. So we'll make it for mine. We'll All have right. lots of celebrations. Well, happy birthday, Vicky, and have a great Friday night birthday. Is always a good night. Yes, thank you. It was great to see everybody. You yeah. too. Thank you. So, nice to see you. Thank you so much. Ashley so, and Robert, thank you. Robert, thank you for putting everything together. This was great. Absolutely. This was great. My pleasure. Thank so you. keep keep your eyes on our virtual tasting page. We'll be doing some more coming up. Um, I think we're going to do a Syrah vertical. Um, and we've got trivia nights and we've got chips Dips. And maybe plating. Go on. <laughs> plating. I want to make chip some signs up for, but we need plating. <laughs> okay. We'll and, work on it. And the Tara cocktail tasting. Yep. The oh, Tara yeah, cocktail tasting. Oh, yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yep. So we're going to kick off her gin. And um, we have a, a subscription called um, Let's Be Friends that we get, you get a recipe from our really good friend. Beth Bollinger of Nest Wellness that she pairs with one of our wines. And we may do, do something a little bit different, um, doing some cooking demonstrations along with it, um, than you having to create it ahead of time. Um, so stay tuned and we'll stay engaged. And it's great to see everybody. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Are we gonna do a cheers? Thank you. Cheers. Oh, I have an empty Thank glass. You. Oh, wait. No. How do cheers. How do you have an empty glass? No, <laughs> As she was probably drinking it. I know. I was <laughs> That's allowed. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, everyone.